Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these aren't in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. You don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts of the Entrepreneur Encounter, and we're going to give you a behind the scenes glance into our businesses, give you genuine feedback, tips and tricks, plus occasionally bring on guests that care about supporting you to grow your business organically and nurturing authentic relationships. Are you ready? Welcome back entrepreneurs. This month has been crazy. And to me, it's been pretty funny because we have been talking about stress and stress management. And Dana could agree with me that since the summer has started, I've been sick. It's just been all over the place, stressful. But we are here to help each other out. And that's what we've been discussing. So if you go back to the other episodes, we talk about what is stress and how to handle stress. But have you ever thought about the stress that comes with going from working for somebody else as an employee to a CEO? I know most of us entrepreneurs started off by working for someone else. And there was a point in time where we knew that it was time for a switch. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the stress factors that come within changing the mindset from going from working under somebody else to working for ourselves. And I know that when I started freelancing a couple of years ago, it was extremely stressful. I had no idea what I was doing. I went from doing one thing because I was, quote unquote, told what to do. But now I have to tell myself what to do. So it was very stressful in the beginning, maybe the first like six, seven months or so, because I had no idea what I was doing. I was just doing it. I'm laughing because looking back, I know I did not know what I was doing. (laughs) However, I was so frustrated with how the office that I was working for was being ran that I was like, I can totally do this better. I know exactly how to run a business or manage a team and organically grow and what steps need to be taken. Like, I approached it in that way. Like, I can definitely do this better. Yep. I know I can. Not saying that I did everything wrong, but, like, I definitely had a learning curve of writing out processes and training people. When I first did it, like, I mean, I would teach people, like, new hires, like, how to do something. But there's a whole other method when you're writing out a standard operating procedure or a training manual for someone else to learn. So it was great for me when I launched my business and was treating it still like a side hustle. I worked for an agency and learned in real time like how to create one and what needs to go in it. Make sure it makes sense. Like you want to document down to the granular detail. It was still stressful, but it was very eye-opening at the same time. Yeah, I remember when I was working in an office, I was a case manager, and I think there was about five of us. Everybody had a different role. Everybody had did their own thing. But there was times where people were out sick on vacation, and that role still needed to be filled. And nobody knew how to do anything because nobody was trained on the different positions. Mm -hmm. So at one point, I was like, hey, I was there for a year and a half. And I'm just like, where do we have a procedure to where if somebody is out, who's going to take over this role for the week? So we did end up creating those systems to put in place to make sure that all the work got done when said person was gone. Yeah. It's almost like when you work for someone else or you're hired for a certain position, you almost stay in your lane. You don't really have to worry about how HR is running. As long as it's running, it's not really a top concern of yours. But when you become a CEO of your own business, you won't become a small business owner, like that workload responsibility. When you start out, unless you are just lucky enough to have enough savings or whatever the case may be to immediately start hiring, it's only you wearing all of the hats. It's wearing the marketing. It's wearing the social media management, the decision-making process. It's the client operations. Like everything starts with you. And that can be a big overwhelm when you're just getting started. And I think it's safe to say is why a lot of small businesses either don't continue past a certain point or they don't even take the leap into entrepreneurship because of how many hats 
you have to wear and be responsible for. Doing everything behind the scenes, managing finances. Like, I think that was a big one for me. I can budget my personal budget so well, but what I can't do well is bookkeeping, which they should be hand in hand, but they're not. To me, in my mind, for whatever reason, they're not. Client service, whatever else that goes into your business, you are responsible for all of them. So what I recommend, at least what I did for myself and what worked really well, is I started to barter services so that I could get help, but I didn't have to financially commit to it because I didn't have the funds to do so when I just launched my business. I had no money to dedicate to it other than like my laptop. And anything I wanted to reinvest, I wanted to use for like professional development. So I bartered with a bookkeeper and like I handle a lot of her back end like organic growth stuff. I'm setting up her CRM and exchange. She's doing my bookkeeping <laughs> and playing business coach for a majority of the things. She's amazing. So that work or responsibility was balanced. But then that almost leads us into the next common stressor, which is financial pressure. Yeah, this is common because not every business, but typically when you start a business, you have to put money up front. Now, both Dana and I are online business managers. There's not really that much to put up front when you're starting a business, as long as, you know, you have a computer and internet access. Normally, people already have that stuff. So at least for me, it wasn't a financial strain to start my business until I had to invest into getting a new computer. But as time goes on and your business grows, you end up having the overhead, like the expenses that you have for your business. And it could be very small. I know for me, it's not that expensive, but I know as you grow and you get new software, hire a team, hire a coach, whatever the case may be, your overhead is going to start going up. So that is where the pressure comes in because now you're like, okay, I have the overhead. Now I even have my personal obligations and you're trying to balance the two between the financial pressure. I would think the planner me is also, when we were brainstorming ideas for this episode, the planner me is still kind of kicking. So long-term, when you work for someone else, they handle your retirement benefits. Some of them provide health insurance. They have the 401ks. They have stock options. They have all this stuff. They have policies. Honestly, some of them, even depending on your role, they'll have insurance policies, like key person policies or whatever the case may be. If something happens to you, they have a policy where they can utilize and have funds to help replace you and not be such a financial strain or burden. If you just up and quit one day, you get in an accident, no longer able to do your job, like they are not going to be hurting. But when you are the owner of the business, that's up to you to make those decisions and to figure out what you can afford, making sure your business is profitable. So if you were to have to sell your business, you would make money off of it, but towards who knows what. You, if you have a team, you got to have those benefits in place in some way, shape, or form. You need to retire one day. If you're a business owner, the whole point is balance and have that time freedom. But you don't, none of us, I don't want to work forever. We do want to retire someday. And you have to figure out how to make that work with your revenue as a business owner. I was working with my financial advisor and we put together a pretty robust policy, but it's still like 400 something dollars a month, which to some may not sound like a lot. But when you're just starting out and you've only been a year full time in your business like myself, I was like, I had to make that work and figure it out and like adjust some things, get a new client to help pay for it. Like those things all transfer over into the financial pressure of being a business owner. There's so many legs that fall under that umbrella. It's a lot. It could be stressful. It could be overwhelming. But we just want to be able to let you guys know that it does not have to be. It's just making sure that you have a plan set in place. Another common stressor that comes along with switching over from working from somebody else to working for yourself is the fear of failure. There are times that you may think that everything is failing because you're not getting a client or you're overwhelmed with your marketing or whatever the case may be. 
it can be frightening because you're creating something from the ground up. So it's yours. But at any given time, any given moment, it can be gone. So you can be, you know, the beginning of your business, you can be 10 years into your business, 20 years into your business, and you can still have this fear. It's common. But that's why what can help is that you reach out to other people that have been in your shoes and have conversations with people to help you along the way and help you take the pressure off of you internally. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I tend to be stubborn and I'm constantly always thinking of another idea or interesting business model. So failure is not something I was necessarily scared of. But as someone who hates public speaking (laughs) to the nth degree, I'm like, moment of silence with how much like it freaks me out to have to talk to a group of people (laughs) and present in front of them anything. It doesn't matter. I could talk about my business, but even my own business, I have to write it down because I get nervous and then my brain won't work right. So I always have this fear. I had a coach point this out. So this is not like some (laughs) self-revelation. Someone else helped my mind be open. I have a fear of success because being successful as like other entrepreneurs that are far ahead of me that have these like 60k months blah blah blah. like everyone's going to be turning to you for advice or wanting you to come and do a TED talk or whatever it is I don't want to be successful because I don't want to do that (laughs) and the thought of like sharing my quote-unquote expertise and opening my mouth for that is very scary and I've had to work really hard this podcast is a result of me working on that and overcoming my fear of success. Like I have things to say. I do have valuable insight. I'm still learning as I go. Like I don't think I'm high and mighty, but like I have things that I want to share with people and I want to help them grow. And I can't do that if I'm afraid of helping and opening my mouth and being successful in a business. You know, it's funny if you're talking about like the fear of public speaking and working on this podcast, like if you go back to like the first couple of episodes, I know that I did not sound great because I was nervous, too, because it's a new thing. You know, it's a change. You're creating something that you've never created before and you have no idea what you're doing, but it can be scary. And so if anybody you've listened to our first like five episodes, yeah, they were... (laughs) We sounded pretty nervous. I think as time goes on, as you practice, it gets a lot better because I used to teach workshops and I taught them for a good couple of years. And then obviously I haven't done that in a long time. So the first workshop that I taught a couple months ago, I was so nervous because I was like, oh my goodness. It's not that I didn't want to do it. It's just that I thought I couldn't do it because it's been so long. So you got to keep at it and practice. All the change and adaptability, it's almost a natural side effect of being in business, especially for yourself. There's so many up and coming tools that make things easier. Trends are changing. The algorithms are being updated. So business is all about change and kind of figuring out what's best for your business, but also really what's best for you personally. And that's where like with this podcast, it was very abstract of Oh, we're going to start a podcast like for months. That's just what we talked about. Like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then we finally set a date and that made it real. Ready or not, on January 13th, I think it was like we were recording and that was scary. I think we both were like, what do we do? And we stared at our microphones. How do we do this? What do we say? Even though we had our show notes, I still was like blank canvas. Now, sometimes we still guess at like who's going to start, but we know what we're going to say. And it flows a little bit easier. Another common stress factor is work-life balance. But you know, what's funny is that I saw something, I think it was on LinkedIn or something. Somebody posted, instead of saying work-life balance, say life-work balance, like change it around. Because obviously you started a business to have this freedom of being able to do what you want. So Of course, you want to spend more time on your business to make more money, but a lot of us have families, have kids or whatever, and we want to be able to spend more time with them. So we're like, hey, let's start this business. So like creating that life work balance where you can create a system into which you're not working around the clock. Yeah, 40, 50 hours a week. I mean, obviously, like 
it's funny. I saw like a meme. It said, you know, you quit your nine to five to work 24 seven. Have you seen that, Dana? Like where the people, <laughs> yes, it's so funny, but it's true because obviously when you're passionate about something, it's something that's going to be on your mind and you're trying to work on it all the time. I mean, I have a notebook with me all the time because I always have things I want to jot down and ideas, but we can't have that work interfere with your personal commitments. And that's why we started a business is to be able to create that balance to which we can commit more to personal stuff. I think you're speaking the love language, workflows and systems, but I think that's true. And I want a caveat. So yes, we get in business so that we have that life work balance and to have more time freedom and everything. But when you're first getting started, you have to recognize that you will have to work long term. But as long as you're being intentional with the work you're doing, because setting up a well-oiled, efficient system Mm -hmm. takes a lot of time. But once you do that, in the long run, you will have a lot more time. And all you'll have to do is just audit it once a quarter and then update as necessary. You won't have to rebuild the whole thing unless you want to completely just do a re-overhaul. I mean, it happens, but you don't have to. You can just duplicate it, fix it up, and fine-tune it for the next leg of business, like the hard work's already done in the beginning. So if anyone in our audience, our listeners, has questions or like frustrated with their current workflows or systems, please hit us up in the comments. Find our Facebook group and we'll help you. Like, that's our jam. I can talk about that all day long, as long as it's not in front of a group. We can do that. Using this as an interesting segue, but being an entrepreneur can sometimes feel lonely because, again, you don't have that waterhole break room atmosphere as if you go into an office and have a team. You as the business owner, CEO, have to create that space. That can be done. That's a big stress. I know I had a hard time just opening up and like telling people what I do. And when I did, half of them didn't understand what I was doing in the first place. So that was lonely trying to constantly just say, okay, this is what I do. So I turned to social media and I found groups of people that were in the same boat or walking the same journey as me. So when I was in event planning, this is probably my best example. There was like four or five of us that got together once or twice a month on Zoom and just kind of talked. It wasn't even like a personal development. We're just like, this is what's going on with my business. This is what I'm going to work on next. Sometimes advice would be shared, but most of it was just like cheering each other on. Like, oh, that's such a great idea. Hope that works. Let us know. And then we'll turn them on again when it does work. And if it doesn't work, we'll say, well, how about trying it this way? This is what myself or other planners have done. And that went on for a year and that made a big difference in just sticking it through the hard times. Yeah. Like we've mentioned before, out of all places, that's where we met through a Facebook group and we started this journey together. It's so funny because when I start my business, I'm like, I'm going to meet people online. That's just like so weird. Like I'm going to go into these groups and have conversations like, what is this? Uh, (laughs) But it can create something pretty cool. If you connect with somebody that's like-minded individuals that are starting a business, I have been in business, whatever the case may be. But again, like we are always here for everybody that's listening. You have to find people that are wanting and willing to be in your corner and to support you. And we want to be able to support you no matter what stage of your journey you're in. But we are definitely here for you. So thank you all for tuning in. And we're excited as always to have you on this journey with us. Next week, we'll be discussing conflict management. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to get the notifications for upcoming episodes, as well as giving us feedback and your thoughts so that each new episode is more personalized to what you need and want to hear to be successful in your business. And as always, all of our information is in the show notes. If you want to reach out to us directly, we're happy to connect with you and leave us a review. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Remember, soft skills aren't just some fluffy buzzwords that get thrown around in the corporate world. 
They're the key to unlocking your full potential as a professional and a human being. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and seek out opportunities to improve your soft skills. Sarah and I have a variety of workshops, online courses, and complimentary clarity calls for you to practice in real time with us. Links are always in the show notes. And be sure to join us next time for more insights, tips, and tricks to help you succeed in your entrepreneur encounter.